All right, welcome to another episode of Safety's Off, our fourth episode, I think. Yeah, fourth episode. Depends on who you ask. Yeah, it depends on who you ask. Third or fourth. So we got Jacob, Jordan, and then in just a second, you'll get to hear from Lucas Jagno from Lucas Jagno and the Roadshow. Uh, top two interview of all time that I've ever done. Uh, I can't even think of the other one. So maybe he's the best interview of all time. Um, super cool dude, super laid back. And then at the end, you got to stick around to the end because he sings a song that I put a lot of money on that's going to be a big hit. Wouldn't y'all say? 100%. Like, it's, it's my favorite song I, to have out. Yeah. Look, it's it doesn't have out. out yet. It's not even out. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be pretty embarrassing when it, the video comes up because I promise you I'm sitting back here just going. I just kept looking at you guys like, oh, yeah, this yeah, is good. This, was, was, <laughs> this is good, right, guys? Awesome. Hey, this is good. We're part of history. Yeah. We're awesome. Yeah, we're a part of history. That's right. Day one. Day one fans of that song. So, yeah. yeah. Enjoy it. Bro, I almost caught that one. First off, man, I'm recording all this, so I feel like yeah. I should legally say that, and then I'll just <laughs> cut up anything. Uh, but I didn't. Okay, so I obviously, when you ha- want to have somebody on your podcast, you got to do a little research. So I went back and listened. I feel like every podcast you've ever been on, uh, yeah, you know, and every uh, that took a that took a long and short time. I mean, relatively speaking, I haven't yeah, done well, that many of them, but there's been I, a few that are over hours long. So. Yeah, I found uh, one, man, that you did back uh, in 2021 that, no offense to those guys, looked like it was recorded on a potato. <laughs> uh, it, it was it was pretty tough, but but the content was good. I'm not trying to knock on that guy. I don't, I don't know what it was, but the content was good. Uh, but anyways, I mean, I went from everything from, from that to uh, you, you sang in church on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, sure yeah. That was good. What was the song? Because I was trying to tell Jordan, who also sings in our worship band at at, uh, at church. Oh yeah. Um, so the one, the first one I did was by a group called Shane and Shane. His yeah. mercy is more. Did that one, and then um, Amazing Grace. My chains are gone. Pretty, pretty standard. Good worship. old Chris Tomlin. Yeah, I mean you can't you can't beat either one of those. Yeah. Classic Jesus teams right there. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's right. That's well, right. Where I was going with with that was that I, I didn't realize you lived in Sabine Parish, and, and correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lived I lived down in Manny. I lived yeah. down in Manny. And, and your mom, I'm gonna bleep this out. And your mom's my neighbor, correct? Yeah. Like I've got the right person. I'm just making sure. <laughs> I just we've never met before, so I just wanted to make sure. Regardless if what you're you, not the right person. What are you person. talking about? What are you talking yeah. About? What are you talking about? Yeah, that would have been super awkward. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like I know you because every time I, I walk by your mom's house, you know, she lets me know. And we came and watched you guys. Um, at oh my gosh, what's the fancy name for Frozen Piro? Uh, Hurricane Alley. Hurricane Bojack. Alley. Yeah. 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 Yes. Whoa, 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 pause. What? Hurricane Alley at the East East Bank Mafia, but you go to Frozen Piro. Correct? Yeah, you yeah. got it. So is yeah. like, all of East Bank is Hurricane Alley or Frozen Behind Piro? Behind it. There's a stage. Alley. Oh yeah, no, just right, the yeah. just the rear area with the stage and all that in it, I guess, is is the tech is the technical Hurricane Alley. But right. it's all when behind it. When were you there? Man, um were, were, did they have the big stage up when you when you saw us, or was it still the uh, the smaller stage out yeah, there? Yeah, it, it was a smaller stage. I haven't actually been. Uh, I'm a homer. I haven't been since they had the big stage. Oh, okay, I was gonna say we were just so the, two days. That ago. would have been that would have been last October. We were playing that show and leaving there and going to South Carolina for a little run. So yeah, that was that would would have been the last time we played there before the last time, which was on the, the bigger stage they put in. So it's a nice spot. I mean, what they're doing for, and they've got people in like every week, uh, they have like rock bands and then they've got, you know, East Texas country and like, you know, whatever country. And, and, uh, it's pretty legit, pretty legit. Yeah. Yeah. They've got a, they've got a really good thing going. They, they really do. You know, you, we travel a lot. We've played uh, really nice places. We've played, some really not nice places and it's <laughs> it's cool to uh to be somewhere like that especially that close to the house you know yeah no it's kidding cool. you're in dallas fort yeah dallas fort worth this weekend right yeah 
Yeah, uh, technically Richardson, but yeah, Dallas area. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, are you guys like, are you a, a full time musician? Because I assumed you were a few full time musician. Uh, actually, no, no. Um, there's been, I, I would say, as, as, as time goes on, I'm getting closer and closer to that point, but, uh, right. no, I'm still working 40 hour weeks and my brother works. He's our drummer and pretty much tour manager, uh, booking agent guy, you know, and, um, <clears throat> he, he handles all the business side of things and he still works. And then my bass player still works and our steel player, he works for himself. He's got his own, he, he farms at his, on his property in, in Florine and then, He's also, um, he's going to kill me for getting this wrong, but I want to say he's, yeah, he's an appraiser. He's a real estate appraiser. That's what okay. it is. So he's a guesser. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, yeah. yeah, he's a setter. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's a good guesser. We got a buddy who does that too for like a air conditioning company or something. We just tell him he's a good guesser for a living. So yeah. <laughs> um, there was something I was going to ask. Jacob, I know you got anything. I mean, so you said you were talking about like good places and bad places. What's the coolest place you've been to? Was it was it a bad place that was the coolest place? Oh man, you know, I would say there's there's different levels, because um, like I played, we played a late twenty. I guess it was late twenty nineteen. Uh, yeah. Labor Day weekend, 2019, we got to play Green Hall in New Braunfels, which is historical, you know, awesome, awesome vibe, awesome energy, awesome history at the place of all the people who played and sang there, you know, over the years. I mean, it's just absolutely uh, uh, almost like I won't go that far because obviously the rhyming in, in Nashville would be a much yeah, grander scale, but, you know, similar. Uh, similar uh feelings toward it right but it is it is an old chicken house you know so it, mm -hmm. it's hot in the summer it's cold in the winter and it's just basically the cool part is being there you know so right like that's <laughs> that's east texas country though right there correct I get, look i get fired up look what what he was telling me about you being on i started listening i was like this is my music there, I mean, there was a there was a time back in the gap i got a buddy who's from palestine and yeah. um so he uh he turned me on to east country music red dirt country and and uh, we used to listen to state line saturday night every saturday like that was we'd That's use it. my roommate we just crank that thing up we just hang out um i forgot what i was gonna say well i got a question oh. and you told me not to you told me not to ask it but i'm gonna <laughs> ask it all right <laughs> what is the difference you would say between like east texas country and like country music and then like away down here we were talking about it or maybe you tell me like yeah. luke bryan yeah i was gonna say well first off the difference is luke bryan's wearing skinny jeans yeah correct he's not wearing <laughs> he's got yeah. a flooring farmer playing in a chicken house yeah, that's, just, that's, <laughs> that's very true difference. that's very true. what do you what do you think what do you think the difference is or what do you say the difference is <laughs> that's funny man we're gonna have to include that in some of our media some point. yeah there you go <laughs> farmer in chicken house. uh no that's great man you know there's so many things, so many factors, obviously the, the visual cues are, you know, you got different styles with, with dress. You got people who are, which even, even in red dirt country, you know, there's so many spectrum, there's so much of a spectrum from straight up Kojo cowboy to down to almost grunge rock looking dress. But right. um, as far as the music goes, man, I would say, you know, traditional country music, you imagine fiddle, steel, good, clean electric guitars. And I think that anything, <clears throat> anything that branched out from that almost always, not, not always, but almost always added some flavor of, of another genre, mostly rock. You know, you hear right. a bit heavier guitars as you get more into the pop styled country. Uh, a lot more drum tracks and and echoes and claps and, and Nelly. Crazy, noise, crazy noises you couldn't do with a five piece band and a honky tonk, you know. So mm -hmm. right. So this is a safe space. Do you like Florida Georgia Line or no? You not a fan? Like you said, that's not I've, country or I've never been a fan. Um, I'm the guy that 
uh, I try to be the guy that's like, you know, I respect that they've had success and somebody somewhere loved it enough to, to blow right. it up to where it's at. But I, I'm not personally uh, drawn to it by any means. Uh, they did have one song. I'm always I'm always careful there because I'm a sucker for lyrics as well. And I thought that they they did that song, uh, Dirt. I don't know if y'all know, yeah. Dirt. I knew that was the one. Well, that's it's with another yeah. local guy. Or No, that's not. What is their song, Dirt? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking You Can Buy Dirt by Jordan yeah, Davis. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, similar concept, but different song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Very much, very much like that. You know, the, 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 the importance of the piece of ground you grow up on and, and all that. I thought those were good lyrics. I just still not a fan. Except of I didn't write. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, what turns you on to red, red dirt country? Like how did, how did that come about? Is it just being so close to Sabine river? Man, yeah, you know, um, I, I think I've shouted him out in a previous podcast, but um, I, I'll always do it unashamedly. A guy named Justin Merritt from down in Manny, Louisiana. He was he was kind of the front runner for anybody in this area as far as playing original live music, and he was heavily influenced at the time that I was around him by you know uh, Cross Canadian Ragweed, Stony Larue. Wade Bowen, Randy Rogers, all those guys were just then becoming in at least over here, you know, I'm sure mm -hmm. where they're from, it was a much slower climb, but where we were at, it seemed like these guys were exploding on the scene and just kind of becoming a hot thing. And he was listening to them. He knew them all and could play them all and showed me how to play some guitar. And, and I just kind of fell in love with, with the style of it, you know, back in 2008 or something like that, maybe. I would yeah, that, say that's probably about the time I 2009 is when I started listening to Red Dirt Country and I was that Stony LaRue, Ross Canadian Ragweed, you know, those were like yeah. the big, the big ones. And I remember being like tech school in Wichita Falls and like trying to get to trying to get to a concert and stuff, you know. Oh, I was, yeah. I'm, I'm from Michigan originally, but I was like, I'm Texan really? now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the song of my people. Yeah. That's how I feel when I listen to his song, Worst Thing About Texas. I'm like, I'm not, I was born in Texas. I lived there for two weeks. Best two weeks of my life is what I tell people <laughs> after I listen to this song. Uh, so, like, obviously, you're from Louisiana, from North, Northwest Louisiana. Shout out to Soda Parish. So, what, yeah. like, what inspired you to write that song? Oh, man. Uh, several things because it took – I want to say it took over probably around eight months to a year to finally finish it. Like I liked it enough to record it. Goodness um, gracious. I spun some, the first, but the very first line um, and the first verse of the song. Well, let me backtrack just a second. Cause the title, the title came from our, our steel player, the, the fluorine farmer <laughs> and the chick. He, um, we were talking on the way home from a show one night and he, he had, he had said those words. He was like, the worst thing about Texas is having to leave. And it was because we had played so many shows in Louisiana and just kind of had, had, uh, grown. I won't say burnout, but you know, you get tired of doing the same old thing, yeah. same old thing all the time. So when we finally were able to kick a foot in the door down in, in East Texas and playing some shows over there, it was kind of a breath of fresh air getting some people to listen to you dance to your music and all that stuff. And, uh, he, he said that one night and I remember thinking, I'm going to, I'm going to write a song with those, with, with that as the title. And, uh, flash forward, I was heading down probably somewhere trying to get my timeline straight. That had to have been late 18, I was going to the Texas Music Pickers seminar. They hold this uh, annual seminar where Texas Red Dirt artists get together and just kind of mash it up for the weekend. They have panels of people who talk about radio and, and releasing music and booking acts and all kind of every facet of the industry. They just kind of get everybody going down the right road if, you, if you're willing to listen, you know. And I was on my way down there driving from Mansfield to College Station. And when I came through, I was on Highway 59, a few miles away from the Nacogdoches County there you line. There go, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the, 
the leaves were it was fall you know it was beautiful driving down that road and i was just like this is this is the lyric you know yeah, the song so wrote I, itself i just started doing it you know and and then later on you know months down the road again like i said i'd thrown a few ideas back and forth with with tobin my brother tobin jagno we write a lot together and uh we had thrown ideas around and sang and tried this melody and tried that word and and then one day I called him. I was out working again in the truck, just nothing else to do or think about. And I was like, I think I got it, man. And I shot him the second little voice recording of the second verse. And I was like, that's it. So That's the money one. Yeah, that was, that's so sick because, like, my ideas suck. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I'm just sitting, like, if I'm sitting in my truck, I'm just sitting in my truck. <laughs> Like, there's nothing going on in there. I'm nothing like, productive. Nothing productive. I'm like on TikTok or Instagram. Like, there's nothing going on. Then there's guys like Lucas here, and he's like, yeah, I just wrote a song that'll get over a half a million plays on Spotify. No big deal. You're, mo you're most productive at 10 to 10.30 when I'm trying to go to bed. That is true. I, I text them a lot at 10 to 10.30. That is, that's is—that's when my wife goes to bed, and I got, that's my most productive time. Most yeah, productive you got time. So, you, so you, you were talking about, uh, you know, going to Texas and how much that, how cool that was. I, I was kind of curious, being a Louisiana, a Louisiana boy, how has that community kind of accepted you or has that, that been a weird thing, you know, in the Texas crowd? You know, um, I would say for the most part, now you, you never know what people really think about you, I guess, if they don't tell you, but uh, for the most part, I haven't seen anything that, that would be like, oh, well, these guys are from Louisiana, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not letting them in this place or that place. For the most part, it's like if you're willing to put in the work and, and the effort to, to try to get in and, and you've got good music, of course, they've pretty much welcomed us with open arms. We've got some really good fans in Texas, some really good friends we've made in the, in the music industry and, and people who just genuinely – love what we're doing you know so well, yeah. um i was just gonna ask go a lot of texas uh texas country artists are from other states aren't they yeah they yeah they they're, they're from oklahoma yeah that's right yeah. that's right they're from southeast oklahoma as a matter of fact and um i know another guy jeremy stuttered he's from uh, i want to say tishomingo i think i'm right about that Tishomingo, Oklahoma. He's very good. He travels in and out of Texas playing music. Um, I mean, Stoney's from Oklahoma. And I mean, we're pretty. We're pretty much Texas. Oklahoma Let's breakdown changed my life. Just so you know, Oklahoma breakdown. <laughs> yes. What is that? Oh. Rookie. Oh, uh, I'm Rookie. sorry. I'm he, sorry. This dude did so much research on you. He didn't. He didn't research the genre. Turn his no, mic off. I didn't. I didn't research. I mean, like these guys, and then like I, I, I consider Kojo that. One of my questions in here is like, who's your, who's your idol? Who do you model your like singing after, and why is it Cody Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> because that's that's that's. I spent days thinking about. He sounds like he kind of kind of got a, sounds like somebody, and then. Was it two days ago or on Friday? Friday, Cody Johnson came out with Zach Brown Band, two of my favorite bands. They came out with like Wild, Wild Paloma, yeah, Pal yeah, Paloma, yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I was like, that's it. That's who he sounds like. Do you feel like you sound like anybody? Like, man, uh, you know, I who love, influenced you? I love Cody Johnson. I do. And the uh, the funny thing about Cody Johnson is when my cousin tried to turn me on to Cody Johnson. I wouldn't listen to anything she had to tell me about him. I was like, I don't care about it. I just don't want to live. I don't care, you know. Uh, very narrow-minded back then. But um, when I finally gave it a shot and a chance, I remember reaching out to her. I was like, hey, you were right. I love Cody Johnson. <laughs> yeah, sorry. that's right. Because, all right, here's my research showing out. On YouTube, you've got a cover of, well, On My Way to You, clearly, like, that's a that's a very popular one. But fence post, which is one of my favorite ones. Yeah, yeah. Like that that whole album is just you could. That's one of those albums you could just listen through all day. But when I heard you sing that song, I was like, "He is Cody Johnson. He's he's our right. Cody Johnson." Well, he's got different vibes and different songs too. Like who? 
Oh, know? well, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, there, what song was it? You've got one, and all I could think of was, this is David Allen Coe, Reborn. And I'm trying to think of what song it was. It's probably something to say. I was going to say, I think it was something to say. Yeah. yeah. It was awesome. Very, it's very honky tonk, very, yes. uh, very whiskey bent and hell bound kind of uh, a vibe to it that we yeah. were shooting for. Because, again, you know, I grew up uh, not just on Kojo. You know, I love Hank Jr. We, My dad was a huge and still is a, a huge Hank Jr. fan. Took us to concerts, listened to all the greatest hits when we were riding in the truck. You know, um, Leonard Skinner, the good, the old Leonard Skinner and the new Skinner. We listened to the new Skinner, too, with my dad. But he he grew up, obviously – in the in the 80s late 70s 80s listening to the original ronnie van zant and the you know the original leonard skinner band who were just phenomenal musicians and growing up on that and pretty much your standard stuff i would say my uh my country music influences really die hard traditional country came from uh keith whitley absolutely hands down um i had heard a couple of his radio hits that everybody knows and thought i knew keith whitley until my bass player's dad turned me on to him he's like no here's the keith whitley you need to listen to and like played me all the songs i'm like oh my gosh you know crying in my beer and <laughs> <laughs> there's no shame in that i love it i love it i still love it no, uh, have you played with anybody that you were just like, man, I can't believe I'm, you know, booked at the same gig as them? Yeah, um, you know, probably this is always a tough question. I've been asked this before, and I always sit here and brainstorm, but I'm pretty positive that my answer to that is is Daryl Singletary. We got a chance to open for him uh, in October 16. And then I think he passed in February of 17. So it was not long he died. We got to share the stage with him, open a show for him. And I remember this now, was the last time I ever let anybody get away because he walked up to me probably, you know, six, seven feet away. And I just remember looking at him and he looked at me and we just kind of both head nodded. And then he took stage and I was like, you know, after that, when he passed away, I'm like, oh, man, I've got to meet everybody that I see. Oh, yeah. I don't know how weird I am or how <laughs> fangirl I seem. I've got to shake your hand at least, you know, introduce myself. But There's nothing wrong with that. Now, were you all under a different name then? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we used to go by After Hours. After back Hours. In That's uh, right. And then, so why why the name change? So, for people, I I already did my research. They didn't do the research. There's no way. Would you please tell them why why the name change? <laughs> so the name change. Um, back when we first got started playing music, we had we booked our first gig about six months out. Like it was it was in December of 2011, and we formed our band sometime around May June. 2011 so we had the whole summer to book this show and practice for this show and i mean it came to crunch time and we didn't have a band name and i i was i had been in another band that had a band name but we also went by the, the band leader's name and the band name but i always wanted to be in a band you know and, right. and since I knew those guys had done basically all the hard work with me getting the show ready and learning the songs. And I mean, we, we grew together as musicians rather than most people. And I'm going the long way around, but most people find a drummer and they find a bass player and they find a guitarist. Whereas we kind of, we were like, we're all going to learn how to do this together, you know, in the same room at the same time. And so I never really wanted it to just be, you know, Lucas Jagno and y'all are my band or whatever. So right. we formed the band and then literally probably a week or two before the show, our, my bass player's dad, I keep saying it, his name's Dennis Bell. He was a huge influence and, and motivator in our careers. And he, um, he was like, why don't y'all just call it after hours, you know, just something, something simple and catchy. You can, you can use, you know, and you know, you're not stealing it from anybody. So 
we're like, that works for us. You know, we just need a name. <clears throat> so we put that on the poster and just kind of rolled with it until uh, 2019. We had been working on the album that we dropped, um, the, the Lucas Jagan on the Roadshow debut album. We were still after hours working on that album. And somewhere around the end of it, we got ready to release and we were contemplating previous releases and, and things of that sort. And it always seemed like uh, you had two problems releasing music as after hours. One was that it's very generic, uh, very generic brand. You know, if you just type that in Google, there's literally no telling what's going to come up. I mean, right. every, makes a lot yeah, of sense. no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Everything from, from, you know, yeah. our band to some nightclub somewhere that's open late, you know, but right. you got that issue. And then also there was another band named after hours in the UK and they were like a dark rap hip hop group <laughs> from London. Hey, you got to so, check out my buddy's music. What? <laughs> no kidding. No yeah. kidding. I can, I can see so, your mom now. Like, yeah, my son's in a band. It's called After Hours. And her coworkers are like, okay. I don't like this kid. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Or... Yeah, well, that's like, that's like if you look up my name, Tyler Warren, which is the most generic name of all time. But it's like a, uh, it's a surfer. And, oh, yeah. And, yeah, he is way more successful than I am. There, way more. Always there's always somebody more famous than, than you when you Google your name, you know. Yeah, I, but, I don't know. I don't know how many Lucas Jagnos are out there. Well, yeah. I was about to say, that's that, pretty – that's very specific when I typed into Spotify. Yeah. yeah. That was it. Yeah. There the only you go. One. <laughs> there's, there's our – that was our point there in the, in the, um, in the swapping of the names. Uh, I wasn't a fan of just using my name again. So I was like, let's let's come up with a band name and, and add it to the end of it. And so we pretty much probably took as long as it took to write the worst thing about Texas, trying to figure out what we were going to call ourselves. And yeah. I was like, uh, we were going to be the no shows, Lucas Jagno and the no shows. And oh. and that that looked kind of cool on paper. But then uh, the the fluorine farmer, he was like, uh, he was like, ah, that's not going to work. People are going to think we're not going to, we're not going to come to the show. <laughs> that's what I was kind of thinking. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I like it. That's not what I was thinking. Um, I like it. So we, we nixed that and we went through several other, I can't even remember all of them, but we ended up at Roadshow and, and it rhymed and it was cool. And that was yeah, it. It's, man. it's catchy. I mean, Lucas Jagno, I love the t-shirts I have. It's like Jag and then N-O. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Which do y'all have, if, if you got, a uh, merch store. I need to drop that in the YouTube. Yeah, for real, yeah. Because I need to order something too. Yeah, this guy. First thing he texted me, I was like, "Hey, Lucas Jagno is going to be on." He was in like, no, I'm not kidding. Like two minutes later, I was like, "I got to get a koozie. I'm going to get a koozie." <laughs> like, okay, yeah. Order, order you a koozie, Jacob. You deserve well, it. Guys, up, man. Yeah. So what? What's next? What's 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 up on the future for Lucas Jagno and the road shows? Man, we are currently looking at all the the release details for for three new songs we've had in the works forever we're mainly just trying to get all of our our eggs into the basket of, of being ready to put it out you know when you what people don't see is when you put music out if you want to do it successfully you have to carry it you know for an extended period of time with with content on social media you know your videos and pictures and posts and giveaways and whatever else and we just kind of want to make sure we've got our heads wrapped around what all we're going to have to do once that comes out and the songs are ready the songs are great i'm looking forward to them um one of them was written co-written with a guy named drew cooper he's he's over in southeast arizona originally an illinois boy moved over to southeast arizona and he's he's out doing his thing man y'all should check him out as well he's a great I like him. I dig his stuff. He's a good singer, good songwriter. And we wrote that one together. It's called Somebody Like You. It's going to be on the the project. And then um, a couple more just original songs that myself and Tobin wrote together. So so that's kind of what I wanted to ask, too, is because I remember seeing Luke Combs and Rustin uh, at the Revelry, and he played Hurricane. <clears throat> Excuse me. He played Hurricane. 
And not everybody had heard of the song yet, but it was his best at the time, still like on Spotify. And uh, it obviously blew up. Like he blew up. I mean, he was he was the opening act for Corey Smith when I saw him. So really, yeah. So he he blew up. And so that's what I wanted to ask is like, how long you talk about carrying that song along and promoting it and whatnot. Like, how long do you carry it? And then like, how how do you know that it's going to be a special one? Like, worst thing about Texas, like as soon as he said it in the car, I'm sure you were like, oh my gosh, we're going to make tons of money off this thing. Like, well, I mean. We we're still waiting on the money, but you know, <laughs> aren't we all? We, aren't we all? <laughs> we got some good. I would say very good publicity, good stream yeah. numbers, um, hit number five on the ranch, and and the truth is, you know, that song's a little bit of an exception, and and I say that because Texans love Texas, correct. And, mm-hmm. And I knew that if anybody would give that song just enough shot to get to the hook, that they would they would like it. At least they may not love it. It may not be their favorite song, but they could agree with what I said. So right. I knew that I knew that that one was going to be special, really. And honestly, we should probably still be pushing that song because it's you know, it it, it has that kind of potential to it. And and it, again, to to answer your question, I guess you just you know, you try not to grow stale, I guess. So you want to move on and do something else. Uh, so, but there are, there are definitely artists that push and push and push and push. And I mean, you never know. Somebody may get back up under that song and it may get a half a million more streams in the next, right. you know, who well, knows? That's what I, I, I was going to ask, like, you're going, you're going to Key West again. Congrats. Right. In 2023. Yes, sir. Appreciate that's, it. That, yeah. That's a big deal, man. Uh, Cause I mean, there were some, Big time Randy Rogers band, like some big time country bands, you know, going to Key West and that you'll get to, you know, kind of rub elbows with and all that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, one at- of the bands I, I was looking at is, is Muscadine Bloodline, and you talk about social media a lot, and that is something that those guys do on TikTok inc- incredibly well. Like it's like kind of like what you're talking about. I must have saw the first line, not to give no free ads, Muscadine Bloodline. So you can email me with the check if you'd like. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like their first line was like, hope your daddy doesn't own a gun. Um, I can't even remember what it was. But it was a real catchy first line. And that's all it was on TikTok for like months. And mm-hmm. it made everybody want to, they were just waiting on that song and waiting on yeah. that song. And so like, I, I can only imagine, like I have no patience. Like when we record this podcast episode that tens of people are going to listen to, uh, hopefully <laughs> all your fans listen to it and we'll get hundreds and thousands. But without you, it's tens. But uh <laughs> Like I wanna, I wanna publish it right then. Like how hard is it to hold on to something that's like that you think is so special? It's it, it's difficult, man. It sucks. It really is because, like I we like I said, we're we're in the process of trying to figure it out. So you're almost you're almost like we have weekly discussions, and it's like, are we just are we just waiting? You know, are we just are we really doing any good by waiting another day, or are we just one more day without a new without a new song, you know, and right. it's almost like <clears throat> it can, it can be a guessing game in your mind, really, whether or not, but, but truthfully at our level and we've had great success and I, I can't complain at all, but at our level, you know, I wouldn't say it's as tricky as someone like Luke Combs, you know, but those guys can drop a song today and it's, you know, they don't even have to promote it. So, I guess it's just a different game, man. But I hate sitting on stuff. I do. Because we've been finished with these songs for, you know, a few months now. And I'm ready. I'm ready to put them out. But, again, yeah. you don't do it and do it wrong. Cause, yeah, I, I don't know how you do it, but you're all right. I mean, it's like it's a business. Like, you got to promote it, promote it, promote it. And you get a release date. And you, you hype up the release date, you know, and, and all that. And what you want to do is like, hey, look, everybody. This is, this is what I've done. And it's incredible. But – I mean, I guess we're, we're all into it. They got me. Muscadine Bloodline got me. They sold yeah. me. I saw the TikTok a billion times. I'm like, all right, I got to listen to the dang song. And then finally when it come out, you know, I'm like, okay, you guys deserve a follow. I'll start listening for all the, because I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. Okay. So you hadn't, you hadn't been like following them at all. No. You, you caught that first line and that was it. huh? That's all it took. 
Like that's yeah. how easy I am. And the anticipation. The anticipation got me. I was like, I got to know what else it says. Like, like, as, yeah. like as soon as it comes out, I want to know because they've, they've, yeah, they yeah, they're drawing me along. I got to know what happens if the daddy does own a gun. <laughs> you know, like he hopes the daddy doesn't own a gun. Well, well what's going on? Right. Like somebody tell me. Does he own a gun? I have no idea. I listened to it one time. It was okay. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'd rather listen to to his stuff. Were you were you satisfied with the rest of the song? No, because it doesn't doesn't I, I can't play it right now because we're gonna put this on YouTube and they'll like kick it off YouTube but uh <laughs> you know we can look it up after this is all kinds of great ad again no free ads must go down bloodline uh but the first line makes you think like it's about to be just a incredible song and it's, it's okay. gonna be a bloodbath yeah that's what I'm like I'm like this is incredible this is the best song of all time uh it was not it was not <laughs> it was not it doesn't give me my feels like worst thing about Texas I blare that. It's on it's on my uh, my country playlist, which everyone should go and follow, called Spinner Baits and Cousin Dates. Ah. <laughs> yes. If, you, if you have Spotify, Spinner Baits and Cousin Dates, it's the best country playlist of all time. I'll we've got, do it. We've probably got like 200 songs on there. Yeah. It's literally it's, everything we listen to when we go to Gaster. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> one more thing I wanted to ask is, so we talked, me and Jacob, to uh, – this guy is kind of up and cup, up and coming country singer uh, on a separate podcast, Bryce Malden, and he moved to Nashville. Uh, he's young. I think he moved and he was like eighteen. He was like a viral superstar about something, and and he's had a couple good songs and whatnot. And I asked him, I said, you know, I feel like you live the dream life. You 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 sing all night and you wake up at noon and you write songs for a little bit and you go back out with your guitar and you write, you know, you play and this and that. So like when you tell me you you do another job for a living and you play like that is just so much more impressive that you're able to write you know you got 2019 uh, i had it written, written down you you named the festival or the uh, seminar earlier 2019 texas music picker songwriter um you know of the year do you think that once you are full time you're going to be able to just push out content and push out music just crazy i would i hope so you know that's a that's almost a a self i would say i wouldn't quite call it a fear but definitely a question you know like right. can you can you do enough you know because it's like yeah i've written some songs and 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 they come out but i've always been so picky too like because i've written a lot of bad songs too that people don't hear and i I'm, I'm not gonna put out a, a song that i don't think is great you know right uh, you, you and, can't really push perfection like that yeah. Like, like the worst thing about Texas, that was a long process of coming up with the, the song lyrics and all that. It's yeah. not like, I mean, it blows my mind. The guy's got a nine to five and he's still able to write a song. Like it's over half a million streams. It's not, you know, you can't do like Eric church and like go to a cabin for six months and like, yeah. you know, <laughs> right. hide from everything for six months and just sit there and write in your notebook for like Kanye, Kanye West <laughs> up yeah. in Wyoming. Well, that's what I wanted to ask. Does it, is your songwriting process that long because you have another job or do you just like to take your time and make sure it's perfect? Like, would it take you a year if this was all you did to write a song? Man, I no, no and yes. And, and to kind of expand on that is like just the other day I was actually working, uh, which I work as an engineer for Swepco. So, um, I work, partly in the field and partly at home on my computer. So I was on my computer at home and I was just typing, doing some stuff, working on the computer. And I just had a melody pop in my head. I had a, you know, a good line I thought that was catchy. And, and within 30 minutes I had a song written, you know, that, that I'm okay with. I'm, I'm not finished with it. I would say like, I wouldn't probably wouldn't play it right now, but, if I tweak a few words and get my melody like I like it in my head to where I remember it, like, I mean, some songs are quick, you know? Right. Uh, so there's a sense in which you can write a lot of those, but as far as those songs that are, you know, the worst thing about Texas, I just, it's easy to say that the worst thing about Texas is having to leave. If you're just talking about liking to be there, but if you're, if you're like, well, how is this going to catch, how is this going to catch somebody's ear that has never been there? You know, right. well, you, you, 
tied into a girl, man. You know, absolutely. <laughs> so, the, so it depends so, on your goal. Are you tapping feet or are you pulling heartstrings? Right. On, you know, yeah. you got to do both. And, and, and if you want, you know, you want all the ears that you can get on a song. So <clears throat> you don't want to exclude too many people, but the, the thing I'm going a long way around again, but to, kind of answer why that took so long because it's like how do you tie those two things together and do it do it in a in a way that doesn't seem like you tried to do it you know so it's uh i guess that's what took so long on that one <laughs> no that's good jordan what did you say you're gonna tap your feet what did you say well he's talking about you know you got he can throw out a quick song or yeah. like put out one that really makes people think so i said are you trying to tap feet make people's feet tap or pull in their heartstrings gosh yeah he plays music yeah you can tell that like he's <laughs> he's a musician well guy. see and i'm intrigued because i've got and look i'm like nothing i have ever written will ever be on youtube like, <laughs> trust me and the reason for that mostly is because i have a notebook like that old black and white checkered notebook that yeah. everybody had in middle school yeah i have one of those full of songs that are like three quarters finished and i cannot <laughs> finish a single song that i have ever started and um and, oh, so, I, I, you know, the fact that it, you did it in a year, I'm like, God, I got songs that are 10 years old. <laughs> this guy's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my, my vocabulary is not that big. I would just have to, I would be on thesaurus.com like all day. Again, can't stress That's enough. How I got an English degree. Was the yeah, you do have an English degree. So, <laughs> yeah. Look, yeah, you would be my thesaurus. If you ever need somebody to step in and play the acoustic, I don't know what he sounds like on stage, but when we're on the campfire and caster, that's fantastic. He's now, easily a four out of ten. He may be influenced by something else at that time. <laughs> but even then, four out of ten. Four out of ten. Might recommend. I strum G C and D and sing the truth. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, you do. That's me. So okay. I, I don't I don't want to we've been keeping you for forty minutes, so I got I got a couple more and then I'm done. So, you know, Jordan talked about tapping your feet or pulling on heartstrings or whatever. Are when you put out an album, are there a certain number of each, or are you just kind of doing what you feel? Like, are you putting out a, a honky tonk song that you want played at, you know, at big country, everybody two step into, or, you know, you, you want four of those and you want six of these or, or whatever. Like, what are your thoughts behind that? You know, um, I've never had, I've never had that, that much of a, a pool of options, I guess. So it's really all just been kind of what, what was written in the time frame, you know, um, and I've mentioned it already, but I, I write a lot with Tobin Jagno, my brother, and he writes, he writes solo too. So there's songs that I write solo songs, he writes solo and then songs we write together. So it ends up, you know, he's got this one and I really like it. Uh, and I've got this one and he really likes it. And we think this works, but we may have one that we don't like at all. So we're not going to, we're not going to put it on it just because we wrote it, you know? So, um, I wouldn't ever say that I've specifically been like, well, we're doing this for this and this for that and this for that. It just kind of, just kind of ha as of now, you know, yeah. uh, I know that like, for instance, bigger artists, you know, they may have more, more songs to choose from and they're like, well, this is better for this reason and, and whatnot. But everything we've done so far has been, more along the lines of, well, this is, this is what we've done lately, you know? Right. Um, oh, in so fact, go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. I mean, to coach go ahead, go ahead. Uh, in fact, one of the, one of the cuts from the last album didn't make it. We were going to, we were going to put it on there. It was going to have a 12th song. I think it was 11 on there. I could be wrong about that. It was going to have one more song that, that didn't make the cut because we just, a great song i like the song i still want to work the song out but it never we could never make it sound like we wanted to in the studio so you know it just kind of again being picky <laughs> well, i mean like obviously your gut and your instincts and your picking has worked out man i mean you guys have got you know several songs that are over half million half million downloads that's blow, that blows my mind that just that blows my mind and you guys have almost like 16 17 000 different li or separate listeners on spotify every month like you're doing something it's crazy man it's cool it's it's fun you know Absolutely. It's, you get to you get to looking at those numbers and when they get big like that i call that big i mean i'm sure other people have way more but 
when they get big like that, you're almost grow complacent with it. And you're like, well, why is it not 19,000? And you forget that it's, you know, there's 18,000 people listening, you know, so be thankful. But yeah, that that's, that's absolutely nuts, man, that you could reach that, that many people on that. I mean, like, and then consistently, if you do it once, it's luck. If you're doing it multiple times, like you've got skill and, you know, right, you, just, right. you, you keep going, you keep at it. Like it's, it's going to eventually pay off. Uh, my last question is somebody said it earlier about somebody else writing songs for somebody. Have you ever written a song for some other artist? And if you haven't, is that something you're open to even doing? Um, I have, I have written with uh, now. I can't say that I've written an entire song alone that someone else has cut, but I've written with uh, other people like uh, Derek McClendon, for instance. I don't know how familiar you are with him. Uh, he plays up at Hurricane Alley, p all the time. Uh, really good friend, nephew by marriage, as a matter of fact, but also a uh, really good friend, excellent, excellent singer, songwriter, one of my absolute probably top five as far as that that true sit down and, and just cut you deep with a song, you know, a right. uh, songwriter. And me and him have written a few together that he did for his projects uh, on his albums. Like um, he's got a song called Blue that we wrote together. One of his uh, one of his other songs was Make My Heart Great Again, which was a <laughs> kind of a twist to make America great again. Yeah. It was no way like, you know, political or anything. He just named it that. It was funny just to be funny. Yeah, don't but, get uh, Jacob fired up. Yeah. So, yeah, I've written other other songs that are out. I would say that 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 aren't mine and I haven't cut. But I would absolutely be down to write some songs for other people. You know that, yeah. that wanted to cut them if it didn't work for me or something like that. So, yeah. All right. I know we're going long. I got a question now. All right, go ahead. I've so, asked my last one. I've tapped out. He's going to ask you if you can finish his uh, checkerboard notebook. Yes, please, <laughs> all of them. Uh, no, I was curious. So you said like your brother writes some by himself. You write some by yourself. Y'all write some of them together. Do y'all have like your own signature or style and how you write? Like, can we go back and listen to all your songs and say, "Oh yeah, Tobin wrote that one." Oh no, that's Lucas all the way. You're like, do y'all have your own I, thing that you? What go another to? great question by Jordan. Just a great came question. prepared. Yeah, came prepared. Great question. It's all just off, off the fly, man. I'm, yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm here so I don't get fined. Yeah, oh, that is that is a really good question, and and I say that because um, I think so, but I think you know I'm obviously personally involved, so I know what he said and what I said yeah. kind of thing. And, and Tobin, he's a very, if you, and I can't, I can't, I guess I can't say that he's, he does all the clever stuff, but he's a really clever, clever writer, you know? Uh, a phrase. Yeah. Yeah. I like to, I like to turn a phrase. I'm a good rhymer. I'm a good, uh, you know, melodically i like to put things together rhythmically i like to put words that kind of roll together and work together like that you know and um whereas he could he could really you know pull your ear with something and kind of get your attention just at least for, you didn't say something like yeah all the sad songs my brother writes yeah. <laughs> you know or something like that because like, uh, uh, that's that what i been, would say about my brother yeah that would have been hilarious I should have. I should have. Yeah. There's a act of it's it's an unreleased song that he actually did the first verse of the other day on his Instagram. He posted a reel of it. Well, he did it to TikTok and then you know shared it on Instagram. And but he wrote a second verse to it. And he's talking about um, the hook of the song is every the only thing not going up in this town is me. We we're talking about gas prices and inflation and you know being the the guy that's working 40 50 hours a week and can't afford to keep up you know everything's going up but you and and then he he sent me a voice memo of, of a second verse to it and he's like talking about the temperature going up but he he says the mercury as a is at 103 and holding and i just thought that was the coolest thing yeah, ever gosh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
I love it, you know. So yeah, that, before he releases it, put that in your notebook. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Finish Mercury, one of your songs. How do you spell Mercury? Yes. <laughs> Finish one of your songs with that. Nobody under the age of twenty will even know what he's talking about. What is Mercury? Right. No, to do with yeah, the like, temperature. Yeah. He's talking about a boat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, that's the first thing I thought of. But that's me. Oh, Isn't that a planet? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought. Of. Yeah, yeah. And then I went. I don't know if that's a planet. Yeah, Jordan's one. With, <laughs> Jordan's one with the English degree. We'll leave it the was, smart stuff to him. Uh, it was a planet, and then it was thermometers. And now it's boats. So, boom. So we're all right. We're all right. Yeah. We're all right. Jacob, you got anything else for him? No. Well, I was just gonna say. So in Richardson, Texas, this weekend. Friday night. Friday yep. night. And then when he are. Do you guys have anything planned for coming back to Louisiana anytime soon? We we're we're in the talks of it, but we don't have anything on the books yet to tell you. You know, um, as far as solid dates, but we your are. Mama, working. let me know. Oh yeah, your mama, let me know. <laughs> then, She's your biggest fan. And then we'll sure. let our tens of listeners know. We'll let our tens of you'll listeners have, you'll know. You'll have 15, 16 more people there. <laughs> There's three, so we're, we're gonna get thirteen more. Yeah. That listen to this podcast or this YouTube. Show, yeah, and we'll all be there. Three are our wives, <laughs> so now we're at six, no, ten. So we got to get ten more people. Yeah, we, we can got, do that. I Let's think we do that. that. We didn't get him to play anything. Should we ask him to we'll play something it. for us? No, we can't ask for can't a live show. That. Can't ask for a live it's, show. Yeah. We'll go see him. That, that's, that's, that that's costs money. True. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he brought the guitar out. Oh, he's got the guitar. Play yeah. something. I would love that. Yeah. Outro. Whoa, wait a minute. I don't know if I'm ready for this. You pick. You pick your favorite. Your favorite. Yeah, you do it. You get so this is this is the one that uh, that I've probably not done yet on a podcast. I think maybe not, but uh, this one's called "She Ain't Here." There's a duffel bag sitting on the bedroom floor. It's been there all week. She packed it up last Friday night and she took off her ring. She was going on and on about how she couldn't do this anymore. And I ain't got a wink of sleep, wondering if I chose the right thing, begging her to stay if I should have just let her go. I've been tossing, turning, burning, wondering what are we even fighting for? If she's already one foot out the door, cause she ain't here, but she ain't gone. I guess she's hanging around for a reason for hanging on. As far as I can tell, I might as well be living here all along. She ain't here, she ain't gone. There's a handwritten letter sitting on the counter, it's been there two days. Pinned underneath her favorite flowers, withering in the vase. It's been a long weekend, ain't been speaking, not been reaching, but she ain't in the mood. And it looks like lonely is all I got to lose. She ain't here, she ain't gone. Yes, she's hanging around for a reason for hanging on. As far as I can tell, might as well be living here all along. She ain't here, she ain't gone. Is her heart set on walking away? They're hanging on for one more day, hot or cold. Rain or shine, I wish she'd make up her mind. She ain't here, she ain't gone.
Guess she's hanging around for a reason for hanging on. Or as I can tell, I might as well be living here all alone. She ain't here. She ain't gone. She ain't here. She ain't gone. She ain't here. Man, man, I, hold on! I've always wanted to use this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I've always wanted to use that. So when's that one coming out? Because I feel like that's the one, I mean, that one's going to be a million. That's like that's that was my, that's my favorite. Yeah, one. I yeah, mean, what I, the heck? By far, like that is awesome. I love them all. I listen. Yeah. Yeah. What, what'd you? Say? That's my song right now because <laughs> yeah. I what I I made a fix to the AC unit the other day, and now my house is sitting at eighty five degrees. And I bet by the time I get home, she won't be there, but she won't be coming. <laughs> <laughs> she is not happy about that. <laughs> so wait, who wrote who wrote that line? You were you were your brother. Um so that one was that one was mostly me. Um I did take some some slight within the bridge, me and Tobin got together on that. So um I had I had the ending of the bridge way before i had the beginning of the bridge which was uh hot or cold rain or shine i just wish she'd make up her mind uh, i knew that was going to be in there but i didn't have the the earlier pieces to that to make it fit you know so that's good stuff. Like yeah the, so the a little bit of both part. you like the what part the reach yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah that's uh, good been stuff. a long weekend ain't been speaking i've been reaching machine in the mood yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was one that was one of those. That was one of those rolling rhyming lines that I, I like to do. So yeah, I yeah. love that one. That's good stuff. So when is that one going to be like officially out? You think? Man, I, I wish I had a. I wish I had a date for you. It's one of the three, though. It's one of the next three coming out that are they'll be together on to complete the the honky tonk heart EP. It'll be a a conglomeration of honky tonk heart and then three more songs. So. Man, that's awesome. I'm looking forward to that one. That's going to be that my ringtone. That do people do that still? Do people make ringtones? No, they don't still? do that. So don't do that. that. Don't do that. Don't make that <laughs> your ringtone. I'm saving you from getting made fun of. Don't make that your ringtone. That'll be my ringtone when my wife calls. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Gosh, I hope your wife doesn't She's listen. She's so mad right She's now. She's so mad. <laughs> so mad about so the AC. So mad. And about this. Oh, man. That's funny. Uh, well, Lucas, thanks, ma'am. We appreciate you absolutely man thank you guys so much and again. all right so incredible interview like i said all-time interview with lucas jagno um cannot thank him enough for being on that song uh she ain't here is that what he said the title was uh did he tell us the title i don't know if he did because she ain't here but I mean, she ain't, well but she ain't that's gone the, if that's the whole title gonna, she ain't gone yeah incredible song yeah. by the way anyways either way whatever it's called uh great song so now we're gonna we're gonna go with our only segment we've ever had uh, it, it is the Leaky Waiters, where we say something within the past week that has absolutely sucked. And, Jacob, you've got one. You want to go first? So I had two, but I think I, I already talked about it during that interview. Yeah. So I go with my second le Leaky Waiter, which is probably the closest to a week. Weaky? Why can I not say that? You can do it. I'm here for you. A Leaky Waiter you can get without yeah. wearing waiters. Okay. All right. So... You, you peed Tuesday. your pants. <laughs> Close. That would be the closest thing without wearing it. <laughs> okay, second, <laughs> second closest. Okay, second closest. So I think it was like Tuesday night. Yeah, because Kat was out of town. My okay. wife was out of town. So I'm big boy in it by myself. Right. You know, got to get up and get to work on time mm -hmm. without somebody yelling at me because the alarm's going off. Right. And uh, Proud of you. The night before, my, I had to wash my uniform. Um, I throw it in the washing machine. I get up to f flip it over. Where it's like nine minutes left on it. I was like, well, I'm going to let it go through that spin side and get a little bit more dry because I hang my clothes up to dry. Um, next thing I know, I'm waking up in the morning. It's 5.30. Got to be work at 6. Running late. Walk in the laundry room. Guess what I didn't do? <laughs> it, it, bump, is it, you got a bump, bump, bump on there? Yeah. Oh, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. 
<laughs> yes. What did you not do? I did not flip it and put it in the dryer. That's so, tough. So, life hack. Right. I don't know if you guys have done this or not, but I mean, I've done this multiple times. Okay. You drive to work with the defrost on, and you just set your pants or whatever on the on the so, dash. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> you've you've never done that. No, Jacob. No. <laughs> no. Then no, I've, no one, no one in America has ever. Nope. No. Then so I've you're done driving it if you have put your pants on the defroster of your truck no. on your way to work. You've never. You done might that. be a redneck if you've. Ever, oh, I've no, you know, I don't think you. I don't yeah, think that's redneck. I don't think that's redneck. Lazy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe just kind of dumb. <laughs> Maybe just a little. With that. It's only dumb if it don't work. That's true. By the time I got to work, you got great those, pants. The only problem is, is how how warm is it at? Five thirty, six o'clock in the morning in Louisiana. It's not very. It's about eighty something. Yeah. And well, I guess it's warm. Yeah. You got that heater on full blast. You got all the windows down, and you're just <laughs> sucking air from the window. <laughs> <laughs> you're such an idiot. <laughs> oh, uh, this is the greatest segment of all time. Literally, just because uh, of your story. Yeah, this is your segment. This you segment were, was for some you revolved were around built me. for this segment. Yeah. So it worked. For the most part, it was still a little boys. The problem is, is I, I ended up outside the rest of the day. So my pants were never dry all day long. That's tough. It was either fresh, Damn. downy, yeah. or whatever. And then it was straight sweat for the rest ah, of the day. So I was, can I say moist on here? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I was moist. Oh, it's disgusting. All day long. Yeah, it was miserable. Disgusting. And that was the day my wife came home. So yeah. she came home right about the time I got off work, and she was like, how was your day? And I was like, moist. Let me tell you about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an uh, idiot. That's a great leaky waiter, Jacob. I told oh, you. Oh, I got an applause button. Wait. <laughs> I told you it was the second closest you can get to a leaky waiter. That's pretty true. Uh, Jake, or Jordan, you want to go next? Uh, go ahead, boss. Okay, I'll go first. Uh, all right, so uh, I hate to be that guy, but it's going to be a long story. So it's going to be a, here. We're going to be a long story. So that's why I was letting you go. All right. So here we go. So uh, a few weeks ago, I had to renew my license. I'm a bus. I can drive a bus. I'm a coach and a bus driver or not a coach and a bus driver. I drive the bus to the games. Let me drive the bus. Yeah. I ha- yeah. Let me drive the boat. Uh, so I have to get a CDL in order to renew your CDL. You got to get a physical yada, yada, yada. That was tough. It took like days to get my license renewed. I drove all the way to Cachada, Louisiana from here, which is about an hour. I got done. Whatever. That sucks. That Normal people, that would be their leaky waiter having to get their license, right? But nothing's easy. But nothing's easy. So I got my license. Uh, a few days later, I uh, just turned 30. Congrats to me making it to 30. Plus. All right. Uh, for making it to 30, I... My brakes are starting to kind of squeal pretty bad. So I'm going to mow my mom's, which, again, would be a leaky waiter, a normal leaky waiter for a normal person mm-hmm. whose things didn't happen like this. Uh, so I noticed they're getting real bad. Like, it sounds like they're crunching, you know. So And I'm pulling a trailer with my lawnmower. I'm going to mow my mom's yard. I got two stop signs left. I'm like, I got to roll through these because <laughs> I don't think I can brake. Like, it's ruining these brakes. I get through one. I go to the second. Whoop, whoop. Wish I had that sound effect. Uh, lights turn on. I'm getting pulled over. Hits the siren and everything. Like I'm a fugitive on the run. Guy pulls me over. Again, this is the third instance where a normal person, that would be your leaky waiter. You had three shots at having a normal person's leaky waiter. But wait, there's yeah. more. Well, wait, there's more. Uh, Tyler's leaky waiter. So he pulls me over. Whatever. I'm getting a ticket. I deserve it. I rolled through the stop sign. Thank you for your service, Mr. Officer, whatever. He gets my license. He's like, where are you from? And I was like, well, I live in Stonewall. I'm just giving out my info to the public. Don't care. Live in Stonewall, you know, whatever. My mom lives over here in, in South Men Uh Yada, yada, yada. He's like, you live in Stonewall, huh? I was like, yes, sir. He's like, huh. Sure you don't live in Shreveport? I was like, no, sir. Never live in Shreveport. Like, I don't know what the heck he's doing. Like, is this a, do you think I'm drunk at <laughs> 8 o'clock in the morning? No, sir. Not from Shreveport. Says on your license you're from Shreveport. So I got a license. And it says my address and then Shreveport, Louisiana. Oh. Yeah. Is this Shreveport? Huh? No, no I'm not in oh. Shreveport. I don't know. I'm like, in a different village called Stonewall, Louisiana. It's, it's a, a different yeah. parish. Yeah, different parish. Yeah. yeah, totally different zip code, everything. 
So, like, again, that would be the normal person's leaky waiter. Oh, there's more? Well, there's more. One more time. One more time. Then I'm going to stop, I swear. I recently got my master's. Kudos to me. Man. Right? Kudos wah, to me. Wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, in order to put that master's on my teacher certificate and to get my raise, guess what I need? An updated driver's license. So I can't use my driver's license that I have now because it has the wrong address. So Man. all this, and now I don't, I don't get a raise. So, so what? Did you get a ticket? I did get a ticket. And no raise. I got a ticket, no raise, and I've got to go back and get a new license. All within like a week. So never All go to the Cachetta. Is it DMV? Is it DMV? No, 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 no. It's, that's not the. That's not the point. Never turn thirty. <laughs> that's what it leads back to. You become thirty. I had acid reflux that night. <laughs> and my knee started hurting. Like just don't turn thirty. Whatever you can do, turn twenty nine again, then thirty one. Whatever, just don't turn thirty. So yeah, that's my leaky that's waiters. Oh, it's multiple. It's multiple pairs. No, yeah. like normal people would have those leaky waiters, but when it comes to me, like I, I just stack them up. Yeah, I stack them up, and I, I outdo everyone. Yeah, I mean your your waiters are far, far yeah. leakier than like mine. I'm frozen. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like oh god, what I would give to be frozen right now. Yeah, you should have went before me. I sh so should have gone. Yeah, before you, you should have yeah. warned me. Yeah, I should have warned you that your waiters were already full and yeah. overflowing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. mine have a pinhole. Right, but, right. Uh. So my leaky waiters, it's really an entire night of just leaking. Uh, so I have been, my name has been used multiple times on this podcast so far without my appearance. That is true. And none of them have been positive, I might add. Not by me. Not by, not negative, but it's been kind of like, We've said know. you like Sitka. It was Justin. I do like Sitka. Yeah. That's coming up. Yeah. In another podcast. It's but true. Anyway, so me and Justin go out. Uh, this was last night, right? Yeah, this yeah. was last night. Justin, so I, another guy, part of Kepler Creek now. No big deal. Just yeah, got him yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all know him. Y'all know him. You, you know my name. I'm, I'm, I'm Jordan Leg. Yeah. You know, I like, I like nice stuff. Apparently, you do I, like nice things. Ain't I nothing wrong with that. I promise you, I can, I can hide money very well. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I can't even find it. Yes. But uh, anyway, so Justin and I go out last night. We back up. I got a call from my previous dear lease president, and he sent me this picture of all these raccoons that they had. Let's make a video of me saddle hunting and shooting a raccoon. It's awesome, right? So Sounds awesome. I call Justin. He's got all the camera stuff. I'm like, let's go. Get to his house. We film some high-quality B-roll. Let's yes. go. We go. Big B-roll yes. guy. Yes, yes. Epic B-roll, all right? We're going down the road. More good B-roll. Get to the gate. Even more good B-roll, you know? It's great. It's Everything is awesome up to this point. Right. And then I feel the leak, all right? Because we get to... I feel the leak. I thought, yeah. he, <laughs> I thought he was leaking. Okay, that was great. Sorry. Go Keep going. Right. Keep going. Keep going. So we get to where, where, this, where this protein feeder is that these, like, dozen raccoons are feasting on every night. And uh, we're starting to get everything out. Justin's forgotten half of his stuff, it seems like. We finally find everything. I've, I, I'm... I'm so sweaty at this point already <laughs> that I don't even want to put my leafy suit on. But yeah. we, we get everything on. You know, he's micing me up, and I'm like, I hope this thing's waterproof. And we go walking up to where we're supposed to go, and it's, I don't know if any, I mean, do y'all saddle hunt? Nobody saddle no, hunts, right? No. Look okay. at me. So, <laughs> touche. So, you climb a tree, and then you, you're using ropes and, and all these screw-in things. Okay, so the last tree that you want to be in is a pine tree because it's nothing but sap and loose bark, right? right? Never right, climb right, a pine right. tree. That's like rule number one of saddle hunting. So we get to where we're going, and I look around, and I'm like, hey, Justin, there is nothing but pine trees within an acre of this place. <laughs> so, all right, that's, that's, that's leak number one. We have to climb a pine tree. I climb a pine tree. It takes forever. Justin climbs the pine tree. It takes even more forever because he's got all the camera stuff. <laughs> We get up there, and it literally sounds like it's raining from all the sweat that is <laughs> dripping off of us to the ground below. Yes. And I'm like, I hope raccoons aren't like deer and smell what you're doing. But anyway, then we sit there. We get all settled in. Got a nice ambiance of sweat drizzle underneath us. And five minutes go by, 10 minutes go by, 20 minutes go by. And Justin looks at me and says, hey. 
how old was that picture that the guy sent you of the raccoons? I was like, man, I don't know, but it's broad daylight, you know? Should be any minute now. <laughs> Needless to say, it gets black dark. We still have not seen a single raccoon. Camera goes off. We're sitting there. Oh, by the way, I don't have my bow. I have to use Justin's bow. That's that sucks even in itself. more leak. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, it got it got all the way to dark. No camera, no nothing. A raccoon finally comes out. We can't even film it. I try to take a shot just to help my my poor buddy out, and uh, trying to make some content. Right. That's all right. you're trying to do is make some right. content for the people. And, and up yeah. to this point, this is just pinholes, right? This is just right. pinholes. Yeah, 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 it's not that big a deal. It's not that big a deal. There's yeah. more. Yeah. But wait, there's more. Then I shot an arrow through the waiters. And I missed. Oh. oh, I thought you really did. I was like, is he, why was he wearing waiters? Like, I was so. I gotta keep confused. up with the analogy. I here. know. I'm sorry. No. I, we're, guys, we're I, I missed this raccoon by I don't know how far. He had a luminoc on it, and I know the luminoc was nowhere near where the raccoon was the last time I saw it. Not good. <laughs> and uh, I broke his arrow too, or I broke the broadhead. Oh my! And that's a very it's thirty-five dollars. No, he said no, he thirty-five could, dollars, like a hundred. He said he, he said he could replace the the that part of the blade. I don't know, but what is it called? Feral. <laughs> it was not feral. It was a bleeder blade. Oh, actually. thank God, bleeder blade. Willie. Yeah, everybody gets a blo- broken bleeder blade. So. Those happen from time to time. <laughs> so long story everybody short, does. yeah, yeah, we we spent an hour and a it half suck. sweating in a tree, getting ready to sweat in a tree for twenty minutes for me to miss a raccoon. You almost had a really bad leaky waiter. Justin texts me. He's like, "Hey." Yeah, Jordan just got out the truck to test a flashlight, and he left his truck in drive. That and luckily, I was in it, and I hit the brake. No, he did not. He saved his That's life. A lie. He saved his life in his That's truck. That's a lie. Uh, side note, though, that flashlight was epic. It's the first time I've gotten to use it. We're going to do a flashlight review? We so should do a Ooh, flashlight should definitely do a flashlight. It's an Amazon flashlight, too. Hmm. Nifty. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's very not, nifty. It's and we cheap, have, we're Amazon Associates. No, no big deal. Uh, anything else, guys, before we wrap it up? It's been a very long podcast compared to all. This other is going to be twice as long as yeah, yeah twice as long. Just, but, but I it's promise you, it's well. They better. already know. They've already watched it. It's uh, been better. Uh, it's been better. It's the best all right. One so yet. yeah, if you're still along here, if you're still listening to the Leaky Waiters part, make sure now that you subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube. Help me out. Follow the Instagram. Join our Facebook, and then you can join our group. Uh, follow us on Apple Podcasts and follow us on Spotify. Look, I'm trying to quit my day job. Don't tell my boss. I'm trying to quit my day job. Uh, don't tell him I said that. I'm trying to hunt I'm for right. a living, which he would be cool with that if I hunted for a living. I just they got to make sure they follow Lucas Jagno too. Follow Lucas Jagno. Yes. I have seen him personally in concert for real. Uh, it's incredible. He is like insanely talented. He legitimately reminds me of Cody Johnson. Not to like say I you know compare him to others, but. He's incredible, and that new song, obviously, y'all just heard it. When it comes out, I've got, I've got no doubt in my mind that it's going to get bought or it itself is going to get to millions and millions of plays or it will get bought by somebody and he will make all kinds of money and that's going to cement his name in it. Like, that's I would be willing to bet. That oh, was I as good it. as live over-the-phone recording. Absolutely. Goes. I mean, that was Absolutely. awesome. Like, Absolutely. I, I was a little nervous about, at first, the quality of the, yeah. the Zoom, which, yeah. I don't know, it might, it might not be as good as we thought it was. Yeah. But in the moment... And it I was know, incredible. I know the, the internet was kind of cutting out, and I was like, no, yeah. don't miss this. Right, yeah. But no. it was, I mean, I'm cheesing. Yeah, I, was, I am too. Back. Yeah, I was hooked. <laughs> hooked? Yeah, hooked. Yeah. Hooked, hooked cooler. Get you a hooked cooler. Uh, also, last thing I'm going to say is we got a couple new sponsors, and um, I haven't signed the dotted line yet. Can't talk about it, but big things coming. Coming. We're going to make tens of dollars. It's really up to y'all. It's up to the listener. So, yeah, make sure you follow us. Uh, We appreciate you guys listening. See you next time. Go to church.